Hello students, welcome to Daily English Homework. In this video, I am going to teach you 13 very, very common English phrasal verbs. All of these phrasal verbs are very common. You should know how to, you should know what they mean and you certainly should know how to use them. So watch this video and do the homework and let me know that you know these phrasal verbs and know how to use them. So that is why I give this homework, write example sentences of all 13 phrasal verbs uh, that I talk about in this video. Watch the video, do the homework, and of course, check grammar, punctuation, and spelling. Make sure your homework is tidied up a bit, looks good for the teacher. Uh, post your homework in the comments section below this video, not in our WhatsApp group, of course, you can join our WhatsApp group, links below, but do not post homework there. And think about becoming a channel member to get more detailed uh, homework feedback. And of course, just to support me and my goal to teach the world English. And check the entire world's English homework. All right, what is a phrasal verb? A phrasal verb is a group of words that functions as a verb and is made up of a verb plus a preposition, an adverb, or both. So a verb is usually one word, like uh, we have the verb walk or work or read. A phrasal verb is gonna be the verb and the preposition. So prepositions are like in, on, after, up, down. So when you see the verb and the preposition, not always, but very often that is going to be a phrasal verb. That is going to be its own new verb. And phrasal verbs can be confusing to learn. There are advanced phrasal verbs that I'm not going to talk about in this video. I will do that in a future video. In this video, we're just going to focus on the base, some basic, 13 basic uh, phrasal verbs you should know. All right, let's take a look at the first one. The first one look after very very common look after so we see the verb look and the preposition here after look after and that means to take care of someone or something and my example sentence i look after my sister every day before my parents get home so i take care of my sister every day before i my parents get home and the second one is take take care of which we use to talk about what look after we use the phrasal verb to to show what look after means now we're going to use the phrasal verb look after to teach what take care of means because they're the same thing uh, so to look after someone or something especially a family member or pet something like that so look after and take care of they mean the same thing um most cases, I'm not going to say 100% the same, but usually they are the same thing. You're caring for something. So in this case, uh, I changed my example sentence not about a person. I said, I take care of my family's finances. So I take care of, uh, I look after, you know, I, I, I want to control or monitor my family's finances, how we are spent. Finances means our money, how we're spending our money. So I take care of that. I could also say I look after that. That's my responsibility. All right. Number three, drop off. Very common. You must know this to leave someone somewhere, especially a child at school or daycare. So uh, usually we're driving a car and we're taking someone to a place and they get out of the car and we we don't go with them we go home or another place so we drop them off so an example sentence i drop my kids off at school before i go to work and you're going to notice right away the drop off is the phrasal verb but we can split that okay we can change uh you know we can put we can insert some words in the middle. So I drop off, I could say I drop off my kids at school, or we can say I drop my kids off. Okay, it's very flexible where we uh, put dropping off. 
The opposite of drop off would be pick up, to collect or to get someone, especially a child, from a place. So I pick up my child from school. Uh, my example sentence here, my wife picks the kids up after her yoga class. So she has a yoga class and then she goes to pick the kids up from school or wherever. So again, pick up. Uh, we can say my wife picks up the kids, but we could also split picking up. It's very flexible here. Hold on. Okay, hold on to wait or to keep something, especially a child or a toy. So there's kind of two meanings here. Wait, hold on, which means wait or to keep something. So I have two example sentences. Uh, please hold on a moment. Now, hold on, very common for just wait. Please wait a moment. Please hold on a moment. It means the same thing. And the, sent the second sentence here, I still hold on to my childhood teddy bear. So this would mean keep. Now, I'm not a child anymore, but I still hold on to. I still keep my childhood teddy bear. That's what it would mean. So there's kind of two meanings of hold on here. Uh, I'm just talking about basic meanings. There might be more meanings to each of these phrasal verbs, but we can't do too much in this video, just the basics. All right, let's move on to number six. Move out, very common, you must know it, to leave the family home and live on one's own, to live on your own, by yourself. So when I was 18, I moved out of my parents' house. Moved out, left the home. Very common, you should know it. Stay over to spend the night at someone's house. My best friend used to stay over at my house when we were kids. So my best friend used to stay over, spend the night. He would come over to my house, sleep, and then the next day he would go home. And but why does he do that? Because we're going to play. We're going to play all night. Get along with. Very, very common. Uh, very important phrase over all of these are very important. Get along with. To have a good relationship with someone, especially a family member. All right. You get along with people. That means you have a good relationship. So I get along with my friends. I get along with my coworkers. We have good relationships. In my example sentence here, it says, I get along with my in-laws. So if you're married, you have your wife's or husband's family. That, that family or they are called your in-laws. You like your mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister-in-law. So we can just group it as your in-laws. And it's very good if you can say, I get along with my in-laws. But I think most people here might say, I don't get along with my in-laws. Uh, I hear that story a lot. I don't get along with my in-laws. But let's stay positive. I get along with my in-laws. I have a good relationship with my in-laws. Number nine, look up to. So again, it's a phrasal verb. Three words. I think uh, a few of these are three words, like get along with. Be careful. Make sure you use all three words. Look up to. You have to use all three words. And look up to means to admire, ad admire and respect someone, especially a parent or older sibling. And I said, I in my example sentence, I look up to my mom because she works very hard. So I look up to my mom. I admire her. I respect her because she works very hard. Look up to. Number 10, take after. To have similar traits or characteristics as a family member, especially a parent. Traits would be physical traits, physical uh, things that are the same, like a, no a long nose is a trait. So I have a long nose and my father has a long nose. So we have the same trait or big ears. I have big ears and my mother has big ears, the same trait. 
uh, or characteristic. We could also talk about personality. So that's physical. We could also talk about personality. I'm very gentle. My mother is very gentle. Okay, we have the same personality. Okay, when it's something the same, uh, we say take after. So my example, I take after my dad's good looks. Good looks means my dad is handsome. I take after my dad. That means I'm handsome. Just an example sentence. I'm not talking about me. Just example sentence. Number 11, pass down. All right. Uh, to give something such as a family heirloom or a tradition from one generation to the next. Now, the word heirloom is an item that has been in your family. It's a very special item and it has been in your family many generations. Now, an heirloom is usually, usually, not always, but it's usually jewelry, right? So my example sentence is, this gold ring has been passed down several generations. So maybe my great, great, great grandmother passed it down to my great, great grandmother who passed it down to my great grandmother to pass it down to my mother, passed it down to me. So that ring is an heirloom, very special for our family. It has been passed down generations. Number 12, grow up. Uh, there's kind of two meanings here. Grow up to become an adult or act like an adult. So kids grow up fast these days. So they become an adult very fast these days. Uh, so it's kind of a symbol of also maturity. They are mature. So kids grow up fast these days. Uh, they become adult-like very fast. And I can say it, although I'm, uh, you know, in my 40s, I could say I need to grow up because I'm a little immature. So maybe my personality is not mature. I'm immature. I act like a child. Although my age is adult, my personality is like a child. So I, I can say I need to grow up. It's time to act like an adult because I'm immature. All right, and the last one, fall out with three words uh, to have a disagreement or argument with someone, especially a family member. Now, uh, when you fall out, you, you usually have an argument with someone close to you and you stop talking, okay? You don't talk and, and maybe you never talk again. So let's look at my example sentence. I fell out with my brother 10 years ago because of money. So in this sentence, okay, 10 years ago, my brother had a disagreement. Me and my brother had a disagreement about money. We fell out. And from this sentence, probably we didn't talk for 10 years. I fell out with. That's, you know, we talked earlier about get along with. Well, I fell out with. It's kind of in the opposite end that we do not have a good relationship anymore. All right, that's 13. Why did I choose 13? I don't know. I just chose 13. Let's go back to the homework. So, write example sentences of all 13 phrasal verbs. Some of them will be easy for you to make a sentence. Some of them might be a little more difficult. Do your best, please. I expect you to do the homework. Do not use translation program to do the homework and certainly do not use AI programs like ChatGPT to do your homework. Uh, please do not cheat to do the, it's better you just don't do the homework, okay? This is for the sincere students. So if you're sincere, do the homework. If you're just gonna use some other uh, program, you're wasting my time, all right? Good luck and uh, I'm eager to see your homework.